Young minority voters are playing a way larger role in this election than people even thought. Let's talk about it. This is going viral right now. The New York Times essentially just admitted that Biden might be toast in comparison to Donald Trump. We got to talk about it. And guess what, Andrew? They're saying in five key states, the young voters and non-white voters are driving the discontent with Biden that the Democrats did not predict. Whoa, all right, let's break it down. There's this article, and it is from the New York Times, which is usually, obviously, you know, very pro-Democrat, but they're being pretty critical. So we got to talk about it. I mean, David, what in general did it say and what points are we going to cover? The findings reveal widespread dissatisfaction with the state of the country and serious doubts about Mr. Biden's ability to deliver major improvements in American life. Obviously, some of the younger people, Andrew, mad about the wars, uh, you know, the foreign involvements in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Non-white voters, Andrew, tend to be very sensitive to more domestic issues such as the prices at the grocery store, uh, concerns about crime in the society. Society. Now, David, is there a chance before we get into the major responses, is there a chance that people are underrating what Biden did? I heard a lot of arguments saying like Biden's did actually bring the economy back, but it seems like despite whether or not there are good things that Joe Biden did, which I think there are some things, but they're being overshadowed by the bad things that people see on an everyday basis. Here's the thing. I think the parts, everybody does good and bad when they're the president. I don't care. Yes, some do more good, some do more bad. Everybody does good things and bad things when they're the president. I think that Biden probably did a lot of the, the a lot of his flaws or his missteps were in emotional, visceral zones uh. where people can feel it. Criminals getting out, you know, like just staying in the war right now that's wildly unpopular in his own party. Right. It's kind of like... This, I, I want to say in a sensational way, Biden has lost a lot. <laughs> like, he's done good things, and he did push certain things through, but those things are, like, on the back end where people can't really, like, they don't really think about it versus, like... It's hard to understand. Yeah, the things that you're seeing, the images, and the people on the street, and the bed, and this, and then the war, and it's like, yeah. And Anyways. I think just the things that an average person can just feel viscerally especially if they're in a big, big major city in their field of view of their literal physical eyeball is not good. All right, guys, you can let us know in the comments down below if that's how you feel, because uh, definitely it's, uh, you know, politics are always complicated. But let's go into the major responses. So this was the number one response on the New York Times uh, they said, you know, I grew up in an extremely poor family with unstable incomes. I can understand the effect of inflation on people's daily lives, but is that more important than living under an autocratic regime? Why are people only worried about prices and not about anything else? Listen, guys, Trump is going to cause the collapse of America because he doesn't believe in democracy. Mm. So this has basically been the major macro. There's a bunch of little arguments, but this is the biggest argument. Basically, most Democrats, white, old Democrats, Democrats are saying, listen, guys, Biden's not a good choice, but Trump is way worse because he threatens the entire structures, the political structures that our country is run on. Right, right, right. Because yeah. uh, words like seditious have been used, inciting or causing people to rebel against the authority of the state or monarch. But here's the thing, Andrew, young people and minorities may care less about a word like seditiousness than other people. Right. Right. And obviously, these young people, they got to vote, too. Because at the end of the day, if you vote, your voice doesn't actually matter as much. Or they can opt to not vote. And those votes were already counted for the left. That's true. Um, somebody said, this is America... Welcome to America, in which young and average affluent college students are so convinced they're right about an overseas conflict taking place 3,000 miles away from our shore that basically they just want to stick it to the main power that they're willing to give the country over to an authoritarian. Of course, that's an extension of the first one. Um, somebody said, you know, it's funny because in 2020, voters basically voted on anybody but Trump, but now it's switched to anybody but Biden who could have predicted this. Whoa. I will say that that is a very interesting switch up. That is a wild swing, actually. Yeah. Uh, well, but it's crazy because people think that Trump is actually crazy wh when he has his mental stability, but people just think Biden has no more mental stability. Mm. Like, literally, physically, the atrophy is there in the muscle. Um, somebody said, it's a sad co commentary that two such flawed candidates, physically and mentally, are the best this nation can produce for a presidential election. Yeah, I think this says a lot about our nation, man. And I do think that's why a lot of people are standing up and saying like, hey guys, uh, 
We got a lot of politicians that probably don't belong there anymore. And we're only able to produce these two good candidates or these two candidates versus that there's so many other better Americans out there. And I think that is a lot of the argument from generally the moderates that I notice, whether it's moderate uh, Democrats or Republicans, they're kind of like saying, dude, we got to get these old people out. These people are outdated, you know. Now, whether or not Trump destroys America, who need, who knows, right? Because, like, people, like, they're just, they're saying that. But right. it's also based on the fact that, like, I mean, I guess, is he going to go to jail or not? It's kind of like you went to the car dealership and they're like, hey, guys, I got selfish and I got C now. Which one you want? I got the, the, the selfish 3,000 or the C now 2,000. Yeah. Uh, someone said, a comedian I heard said, yeah, you got frail or jail as presidents. Frail or jail I, as presidents. There's a famous Thomas Jefferson quote that says, the government you elect is the government you deserve or the, demo you know, basically people get the democracy they deserve. There's also another quote that is, uh, it's, it's questionable whether Churchill actually said this or not, saying the best argument against democracy is a five-minute conversation with the average voter. By the way, this is not a real quote from Winston Churchill, but it, it, he had his own qualms with the idea of democracy. And yeah, man. Like I said in a video before, man, I think voting for president is such an emotional issue where it's like you really need to think about voting like first of all, locally and like statewide, because those are the things that actually affect your life first. But everybody also wants to vote in the presidential election because it's symbolic. Right. Um, some real quick takeaways about this article. Obviously, a lot of young people, they really care about what's going on in the Middle East right now. Um, I would say rather than them switching parties, it's more them not showing up to the polls. And a lot of those votes may have gone to the Democrats is what you're saying. So if, they're, they're already counted. Right. So something you're counting on is not going to come through. Right. And that's, yeah, that's going to prove bad. Um, minorities and immigrants, maybe even second gender immigrants, tend to care a lot more about tangible things in their life rather than these things like uh, Jeopardy of uh, founding fathers, constitutions, even foreign wars. I just think a lot of people are more concerned about like, what am I seeing day to day in my everyday flow? Yeah, I mean, a lot, I think a lot of immigrants are also business owners or they kind of work within their community, for example. And so they're just going to be focused on how their community is doing. If they feel like they see more of this issue, the migrant issue is affecting them more or the, yes. this, the prices is going to affect them more, whatever inflation it is, or like those things just affect your life immediately. And it is tough to tell somebody not to think about those things. You're not high-minded enough, immigrant. You, yeah. You're only thinking about but, cereal but, prices. But you know, I'm, just, I'm like, just thinking about what I see down the on my street in the, on my downtown city right. and, and especially and my stores. Let's be honest, Andrew. A lot of the previous generation of immigrants, they did go through some sort of legal process of immigration. That people without documents, even if they're immigrants themselves, they may not support that. Right. To right, be honest. Right. I mean, it's just a different situation, even though you think it's similar. My last... Takeaway is also, uh, my, my, my final takeaway from the article is also my final takeaway in general, Andrew. People, like, don't think Trump is really better or a good president, but they're just willing to take a gamble because it is an emotional referendum on not liking the status quo. Like, people don't think, I don't think people think Trump is going to be a great president, but they're just so sick of the current status quo, they've waited out, and this is what all the polls are showing. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I mean, um, like this is where the this is where it's at. Yeah, I think both candidates are unideal, and I think that it's just you. I mean, I I already put my vote in, and I didn't even vote for either of one of them. You know, I voted for a guy who's not even in the race anymore. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it's it's tough, man. You guys, let us know in the comments down below because uh, it seems like as we get closer in this election. It's just there's more bad on each side. There's more dirt on Trump. Trump, tr Trump going to go to jail. He's got so many, all these things. Is Biden just going to drive our, our country into like more and more debt and supporting all these things that the people don't support? Or, or uh, you know what's interesting is that it really comes down to like these five or six states. That's why it's crazy. That's why it's crazy. The president just comes down to these five or six states. Well, literally, all the yeah, other when you poll these five or six states, that's your outcome. Listen, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Very complicated. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace.